Asante, first of all, who do you think Mr. Bagwin's comments are actually directed at? Who is he talking about when he says, when we brought Kwesi Yantichi down, we brought down Ghana football? Who is he blaming for this? Um, well, I think, I mean, listening to uh, the, uh, the recording, it's, I mean, I think the part of the people that he was uh, blaming for uh, bringing down Mr. Nantichi was the press. Because I think at the end when he talks about you build people uh, or you destroy people, you you, you destroy Ghana or uh, the, the, what they stand for and all of those things. So I think, I think the press is one. But I mean, the way I want to sort of respond to this, uh, I can, I'll leave all the technical football expertise and reasons why we're doing well now compared to uh, doing well, doing badly now, even if that's the case uh, compared to the past, uh, to the football aspect. But I believe that even, uh, even though I'm not a football analyst, uh, the fact that everybody could attest to the way the team played in the last two games and the technical quality that was brought to bear and so on, um, probably also explain why maybe we're not doing well in the past. So anyway, but I'll leave that. So, I mean, to deal with the more substantive issue, I think uh, for me is this uh, allegation that uh, somehow Ms. Nantechi was brought down because of uh, just, I don't know whether the press having something against him or as far as I understand, Ms. Nantechi was convicted uh, uh, by FIFA uh, at the dismay hearing for bribery and corruption. And so, um, you know, he might have the finest qualities, might be one of the best administrators admired by his colleagues and all of that. But if he's corrupt, uh, is that the type of uh, victory and uh, representation that we want in international circles? I mean, we we have gone through, you know, conflicts and, and, and civil strife and, and murder and violence to have a constitution that grounds, you know, uh, the state's integrity and the public integrity uh, in, in a number of, of laws, um, you know, that uh, eschews corruption um, and, and bribery and, and things like that in the public public space. And there's ample evidence that if you want to build a society that is progressive, that is inclusive, that delivers development, you have to control corruption. So there, there shouldn't be at any point, no matter how, whether it's football that we love so much or uh, whatever the, the personal relationship we have with people, we have to be able to draw the line when it comes to issues of corruption. And I think, you know, um, it's, it's not helpful um, when, you know, we, 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 we try to have these double standards with officials. I mean, the people who um, uh, did a, you know, took some kickbacks when they were selling listening devices of the national, national security, uh, the NCA people, they are in jail. They've been, they've been jailed. Mr. A B uh, uh, J uh, at the procurement uh, 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 National Procurement Authority, you know, uh, has been has been found guilty of you know basically overseeing you know a whole host of corrupt activities, you know. So we, I mean, these people, uh, and and of course we want him, you know, there's further action that's taken against him, but we cannot on one hand be expending all these resources, set up the Office of Special Prosecutor, all of these things, hmm. um, say that we are trying to tackle corruption. And then, you know, when we get statements like this, where we say, oh, well, you know, he was a fine administrator, and therefore uh, what we did, you know, was not fair, that he would have been the best person to have represented us at FIFA, you know, he had a, a bright future. Well, if all the stuff that he was doing and the success he was making, on the side of it, he was engaging in corrupt activities, we're supposed to turn a blind eye. Mm. And the media that 
are empowered by the Constitution, obligated under the Constitution, you know, to to put a shine on on this misuse and abuse of office and so on, are doing their job. Should we be chastising them? Hmm. It it sends real mixed messages. So I I really think that you know, and and maybe Mr. Babin's you know statements reflect some of the 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 contradiction that we put ourselves in when it comes to dealing with you know uh, corruption and corrupt behavior. That we have to be clear. We seem to be uh, sometimes you know uh, uncertain about what we want, but we can't all have both. We can't eat our cake and have it. So. Um, it was not uh, the most positive news to to get from the speaker, and and um, I, maybe you know he 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 loves football and he wished that the days of Nantechi could be re- relived, you know. But I don't think that uh, if the person is a, a great administrator and is corrupt, we should turn a blind eye. And and pretend that you know that doesn't exist. That will go against everything that the whole public uh, uh, interest is set up to do. Uh, now, is it not more about proportionate response? Is that not perhaps what Mr. Bagman is pointing to? He says himself, um, "Discipline your child, but don't cut off or don't break his arms and legs." Is he not perhaps suggesting that the reaction to uh, the the expose on Mr. Nyantichi was perhaps not proportionate to his offence? And uh, who, whose fault whose fault is that? I mean, FIFA has his um, his rules, right? Um, I mean, I think people have even said that Mr. Nyantichi was supposed to be prosecuted. As I said. Where what he has done uh, is not different from what the people are in here or whoever did and are in jail, and then and, and the prosecution didn't happen on the Ghana side. It's only FIFA's actions that led to that. I remember that this was also in a contest where even FIFA itself has been under a cloud of of of, of suspicion about you know underhand dealings at the highest level, and Mr. Fatino actually sort of, you know, rode on that to, to become FIFA, uh, you know, boss. Because corruption was a big thing, and there was this effort to, to clean it up. So at least FIFA was taking his actions. And even in Ghana, there's all constant stories, and I'm sure your football analysts you know, can tell you, that there were always constant stories about bribery, the game, and so on. Everybody talks about it. And yet nothing was done about it. It took the bravery of people like Anas and so on to go and uncover this. I mean, he, we've seen the, the impact that, you know, he has suffered with Amat Zueli and people like that, you know, getting killed. So, I mean, I think when we have to put these things in perspective, and, you know, um, as I said, people may have, you know, emotional attachments to all of these things. But if we don't want to feel those things, then we should put the systems in place to tighten it and make sure that our friends and our, our uh, people we love and so on don't get themselves into these kinds of uh, issues mm. so that we'll have a, a conflict, you know, when we have to, you know, apply the law. But for me, what is very clear to me is that if we do not, and we know this conversation is not, I mean, it's not to today, but it's the same way people talk about, and I mean, oh, well, everybody does it, you know, maybe he got caught. Well, that doesn't address the problem. It just means that you have a, a pervasive corrupt system, and that once in a while you get somebody that get caught. And the fact that that person get caught doesn't mean that, and others don't get caught doesn't mean that it is unfair, you know, uh, to punish the the other person. That cannot be the basis on which you address uh, a problem that is so debilitating. That until you are the at the wrong end of it, you will not really appreciate the dangers that it has for you know any stage and any development. I mean, as I said, ample evidence that has been proven. So um, you know, I for me, I have no, I don't have that confusion in my head. Uh, I know what corruption does to a country and a society, 
And if we are not prepared to uh, draw the line where we have to draw the line, and we we are going to be flaky on setting about what we have to do, um, I think then we will never make progress, and we will all pay for it. That's that's almost a given. Um, we're also joined by uh, Linda Oporikwapo, who is, uh, um, of course, the big boss at Ghana Integrity Initiative. Uh, it's probably also worth mentioning that um, uh, uh, Linda Oporikwapo is on the disciplinary committee of the Ghana Football Association. Uh, good morning to you. Do we have uh, Linda Oporikwapo on the line? Yes. Oh, hi. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for making the time. Oh, good morning, Kojo. Good um, morning, everyone. It's a very interesting uh, person who has made this comment. Uh, this is the Speaker of Parliament. What do you think that that indicates uh, when it comes to our fight against corruption um, and, and our perception of corruption in, in the highest levels of governance? To hear our Speaker saying that um, by exposing corruption of a leader in football, uh, we we have shot ourselves in the foot. Okay, so before I try to respond to your question, let me actually say I serve on the ethics committee ethics of GSA, committee. not the disciplinary committee. Thank you for that correction. Okay. Appreciate it. So, could you, I'm still at a loss. Uh, you know, you actually shared this in the, the, the video or the voice uh, with me, and I'm still struggling to understand from which angle the right honorable speaker is coming from or was coming from. Reason being, uh, he, he is the leader or the head of parliament. And the fact that parliament plays a very important role or has an important role in the fight against corruption, they actually start everything. They have the right to pass legislation, and it is legislation that we try to control or sanction or deal with the problem of corruption. I'm sure many Ghanaians are equally confused in their minds exactly what it means. We are, and I don't know which of the FIFA he's talking about. Is it the same FIFA that conducted further investigations after Anas's uh, documentary and then said, sanctioned um, Mr. Nyantechi? and ask him to step aside, or which of the FIFA is he talking about? I'm confused as well. We're talking about corruption in football, and he's here talking about how a leader was good and would have actually done but better for us, and we should compare ourselves to what the Senegalese lady is doing. No. The, the leader of the Speaker of Parliament who is responsible for passing legislation to deal with corruption cannot be talking this way. I'm confused, and exactly the question you asked me, the perception about our leaders when it comes to their own commitment and, and, and willingness to deal with the canker, we are always criticizing the executive for showing not much commitment in dealing with the subject of corruption. And so for us to be hearing this from the right honorable speaker of parliament, who is equally a lawyer and really understands these matters, that there have been investigations conducted and somebody has been sanctioned by the same body and then even the, to the extent that we actually argued why they didn't Ghana um, have find anything wrong with Mr. Nyantichi and all that. So for me, I, I'm confused. And I, I think he has to come clear to explain to us exactly from which angle he's coming from. But it tells us that our leadership, our leadership commitment across, across board is somehow questionable when it comes to the fight against corruption. You see, I'm disappointed. I think it's an understatement. And I think the speaker should come again to tell us exactly what he meant by that statement. Another aspect of this is the audience that he was addressing, the media, the new parliamentary press corps. There are going to be some first-timers in there, young journalists whose first assignment is parliament. Uh, and they are hearing from the speaker that uh, you know, the, his message is basically that uh, you, have to be, you have to criticize leaders but, uh, you know, just criticize them. Don't bring them down because it will affect you too. Uh, what does that do? I mean, because press freedom, obviously, is an important tenet of, uh, of the fight against uh, corruption, isn't it? It's like letting them, telling them to be careful <laughs> in this new rule that you are taking up and that 
you know, your dealings, they can actually help catch the small flies, but the big ones, be careful, try and not bring them down. Who brings any big person down, if not for their own acts? I heard um, Dr. Asante talking about mentioning some names of heads of institutions like the former PTA boards and all those things. The acts that they engage in, who actually um, ask them to do those things, they know the laws, they know the rules. So then they decide to engage in acts that amount to improper uh, in, uh, corruption, if I can put it uh, straightforward. And then they are found um, through investigative journalism work or journalist work, and they are sanctioned accordingly, and you are actually, uh, we talk this way. Then I'm like, uh, is that just telling them that as you take up this rule, you can actually uh, do everything else, but try not to bring them down. They bring themselves down. For me, it's, it's, it's a caution that they shouldn't take. They shouldn't take seriously. I think they should, if they are committed and they want to be contributors to the fight against corruption, the role that the media has to play and play very well. I think they should actually know what the job is all about and the, the fact that they should take the fight against corruption seriously. For me, corruption is the number one. Um, developmental challenge that we have as a country, and it's not getting any better. If you look at the CPI scores, the, the Afrobarometer scores, and all the studies still point to the fact that it's still a big problem. And for me, the NACAP actually allows everybody to play a role. And the media have a very important role to play. It doesn't, doesn't matter where, where, where they are operating from. If leaders are found to be corrupt, it has to be investigated, they have to be sanctioned, and we move on and to deal with the other issues that we have to deal with. So then if I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the press, I, I, would, I wouldn't take this seriously. Before I take final thoughts from Dr. Asante, let me just get this sort of technical <laughs> direction from you, um, Mrs. Ofori Kwafo. Uh, so you, you are on the ethics committee of the GFE. Mr. Bagman is not the first person to ever suggest that Kwesinyi uh, Antichi uh, was given a raw deal. But in technical terms, his conduct, did it rise to the point of a lifelong ban and all the other sanctions that were leveled against him? We saw what he said in the video. By the ethics and standards of the, of the GFA at least, did his conduct rise to the level where he should have lost his uh, position? I think he leaving the job and all that was, were actually as a result of the sanction from GSA. For me, when they talk about crime, it's already determined, the sanctions already prescribed. So then if somebody has engaged in acts that amount to corruption and the rules and the policies and the regulations and the law says that this is what you do, A, B, C, D, if you think it's uh, to punitive, then uh, measures can be taken in the long run to deal with them. But for now, that is what is in the books, and that is what was meted out. So for me, uh, once the uh, uh, corruption or once a crime has been prescribed and punishment or sanctions equally done, I think it should be implemented until anything else changes. So um, this is not a matter, I don't think, that came before the effects. It happened a long time before I joined. And so it's not a matter that I'm talking on from the point of view of the ethics committee. But then looking at what happened from FIFA is what I'm actually dealing with. So if the, if the sanctions are too high, then going forward, they can deal with it. But for now, if that is what is supposed to be done, I think it is what it is. And uh, for me, I would also think anybody else who engages in acts of corruption should be dealt with, um, with uh, I don't know, <laughs> but then I think it should be anybody engaging in an act of corruption that even not result in we losing even 10,000 Ghana cities. It has to be sanctioned, serve as a deterrent to other people. So for me, it is what it is. Right. Um, Dr. Asante, my, my, I think the last thing I would like to hear your take on is, is something about cultural context. We always bring up the point that we shouldn't just copy things wholesale from other parts of the world. We have our own cultural context. In other parts of the world, corruption is, I mean, there's zero tolerance for it. If you do the wrong thing and you are found, you will be dealt with. Simple. It doesn't matter who you are, what good things you've done in the past, you will be dealt with. But in Ghana especially, 
perhaps our complete lack of competent leaders or a shortage of competent leaders has led us to the point where we tend to believe that if someone is corrupt, as long as they are good at their job, they should be given a chance. Is that not a cultural context that is worth considering? Well, I mean, there's something about culture uh, that uh, I, I would add. It's a culture, it's a political culture that has developed. You know, you, you sort of get comfortable. At some point, you almost begin to believe that um, the end justifies the means, right? You don't really be, begin to care because you have such a deficit in terms of the ability of people to deliver that you take anything uh, as, you know, as, uh, uh, as good, you know, or, or the, the best of two evils, basically. But that cannot, you cannot, as I say, you can't build anything based on that kind of logic and, and that principle in society. At some point, whatever it is you have built will begin to crumble because uh, corruption often is, uh, is set to benefit individuals. In the public space, that becomes a problem because you are actually entrusting uh, resources and power authority with people so that they can do things that benefit the collective. Those two purposes cannot coexist. Mm. And that's where you have your problem. So whatever, you know, it's a political culture that we have adopted to the point that, you know, we make these kinds of judgments that, oh, we lost uh, a good person, even though we know corruption is pervasive and everybody does it. But because he got caught, you know, we, we, are, we are upset. So that, that, for me, as I said, is, is, is perverse. Mm -hmm. It's problematic. Any serious country that wants to deal with corruption, you cannot take that approach. So it's a, it's a culture that we have developed. But if we seriously want to address corruption, it's something that we have to completely put behind us because that path cannot lead us to any place. Uh, that, uh, you know, would overcome our development challenges. It would just make things worse. Right. Well, I thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Kuju Pumpuni Asante, who, of course, uh, is the Director for Advocacy and Policy Engagement at the Ghana <laughs> Center for Democratic Development. Uh, and uh, thank you also, Mrs. Linda Ofuri Kwafu, who is the Director at um, the Ghana Integrity Initiative, and also is a member of GFA's Ethics Committee. Thank you both very much. You're welcome. El Jojo. You. Charlie, this one, it's a football thing, but it's, uh, you know, it's about football corruption. Yeah. Corruption is not new to football. No, it's not. So I know you've talked to many people, football people, I love that term, mm -hmm. many football people who believe that yeah, Kusinga Antichi was handed a raw deal. Yeah, I've heard that. How um, does Bagbin's comment, you know, sit on top of all that? So, let me let me state that once there's documented evidence, once the FIFA Ethics Committee had the opportunity to go through all the evidence laid before them came up with a life ban and then decided to reduce it further, I mean, later to 15 years. It is difficult to say that Kwasin Yantichi did not deserve to be off or he did not deserve to leave the Ghana Football Association, as it were. Mm. For most of the people I've spoken to, they've had a problem with the initial overreaction when the news spoke. So there were some very interesting things like describing the Ghana Football Association as a crime scene. You know, almost having, it was almost like what estates versus Kwasinyantichi, where we had to go through a process. And for most of the guys I've spoken to, it looked like it was a war between government and 
question and chief where government wanted to take advantage of um, gaining some public traction because yes it was a good way to more or less prove to the world that we are not corrupt so they probably went in so hard on question and chief and maybe along the line um, perhaps lost the main picture of having to deal with cleansing a football system so it is the government's bit and the overreaction that I've heard a lot of people say that perhaps all of that would have amounted to FIFA taking this ball seriously. Because at the point, remember, um, FIFA was dealing almost with government on, on this matter mm. because then there had to be a normalization committee and all of that. So in more of the dealings with FIFA, they, they had to take the report that was given to them clearly fed by what government was putting in and i'm sure all of that led up to the kind of punishment that we handed to Kwasinyantichi. so it is the overreaction that um, most of the football people are spoken to you know complain about again they say that there was a football system that should have been allowed to more or less in quotes cleanse itself because mm. like you have the ghana football association ethics committee you have the ghana football association disciplinary committee and like we have seen in other jurisdictions when things have happened like this, the, the, the Football Association takes charge of it. Mm. There's a big case to say, or a big case to make that when all this happened, we didn't even hear the Ghana Football Association Executive Council come out to say that we reject all of this or we are not with Kwasinyantichi on this matter. And so probably that's what gave government the point. But it is that initial overreaction that mm. a lot of the football people think escalated the matter and really made it what it was in the end. Mm. But at the end of the day, once they're documented, evidence and 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 the fifa ethics committee itself had gone through and sat through this case twice and still came up with a 15 year ban it's it's fair to say that uh, what happened had to happen it, 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 i don't know i'm happy to be corrected yeah i i read all the stories around this matter before we had this conversation yes but i didn't watch anas's uh, video yeah as i recall it Kwesinyi Antichi's conduct or his comments in that video didn't have anything to do with the GFA. They were more to do with giving people contracts uh, because he claimed a certain affiliation with the president. For which reason the president reported him to the police. Yeah. It was again the presidency that dissolved the GFA following yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm trying to draw the link. I mean, was, was it F GFA business? Was Kwesinyi Antichi conducting GFA business, you know, uh, in this video. Why did the GFA become the target or the victim of this, uh, of, of Mr. Nyantichi's comments, Raymond? So uh, the entirety of the video included an investigation into GFA officers, some even at the sports authority, some referees, referees. some yeah. yes yeah. so it was yeah. an extensive one mm. which actually pointed out that there the, the the system is basically corrupt from top to bottom mm. and some of the evidence was given but give me the opportunity to do this briefly there are moral reasoning there are two general arguments which is predominant in that area the philosophy is in two form the people who suggest that the utilitarian view so far as it inures the benefit the end justify the means kind of thinking mm -hmm. that so far as your conduct ends up benefiting the larger majority of the people is acceptable on the other side is the deontological grouping who believe that something is wrong because it is wrong whether it benefits the majority or the minority or whichever cause so the end does not justify the means so those two views actually largely influence moral reasoning. Mm -hmm. I'm breaking it down. Speaker Bagbin says something, and I want to look at it this way. On the topic level, what I get the speaker saying is that do not throw away the baby with the bathwater. If I understand the speaker right, he's saying you can criticize, but do not destroy. But the example he chose to illustrate this point is problematic. The example of what happened in the case of the GFA president was problematic. The investigations, the details about what he had done. In fact, if he's still not standing trial, the man is being charged with fraud and corruption currently. The, 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 what is in court 
except the speaker knows more than what the investigations and all those things have done. Or the speaker has some very privileged information that's not in the open, or we are not privy to. It is a very terrible example to support your claim that do not throw the baby away with the bathwater. It is justified to tell journalists that we are all country Ghana, going concern. That going concern should have you believing that we are all building this country together. Mm. You can criticize those in office. Don't destroy them. It's what we mostly say, constructive criticism and destructive criticism. Mm. That point is a legitimate point to, to be made by the speaker. But immediately he descended to citing the example. It's almost like your topic is right. But the supporting example is completely off mark and then just it into issues of corruption and fraud. So we should not... So don't criticize, but don't criticize corruption. Uh, you should criticize corruption, fraud, and then leave it at that. Don't get corruption and fraud leaving people in the office. That's completely unacceptable. <laughs> so that's how I see the, the, the yeah. speaker's statement. Mm -hmm. If you develop it down, his conclusion is equally problematic because the example he chose to support his claim was problematic. Now, except maybe what I'm saying, I'm so diminished in quality in understanding what the man said. Or he has so much privileged information that the people are doing prosecution, the people did their ethics review, and mm -hmm. all the other people who said young churchy this, this, or that were up mark. So mm -hmm. that is how I see this. Maybe if the speaker had cited a better example, maybe if the speaker had been mindful of what he was saying in such a way that he didn't come off suggesting we, an institution that Baron de Montesquieu is supposed to be saying will check the executive, that institution's leader is only interested in merely criticizing but not necessarily dealing with the deeper parts of corruption and the other things related, maybe if he was not sounding like that, he would have taken what he's saying more seriously. But mm -hmm. I want to pretend all that he meant was that, please criticize, but don't destroy your own people. Let me just chip this in. Uh, could you were asking about uh, you know, Nyan Techi having things to do with government. If you watch the number 12 documentary, there was um, a sponsorship package for the Yeah, year. yeah, yeah. So and Nyan Techi said they should form a company Right. Yes. So that they would S take the percentage. Yeah, percentage. Yes. Yeah. Before they true. run it to the. Yeah. So that, I mean, just wanted to put that information mm. out. So yes, there was yeah. some yeah. FA so, so, so related. So, that, so, that, so that, yes. that was that was that was the basis. So it was, was going basis, on yeah. in trying to convince the in quotes the sheikh or the yeah the mm -hmm. sheikh yeah. you know to 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 get him the contractor to get that. Yeah. You know, so that he would that yeah, he would take his company. Yeah. Basically. And they take the percentage. So that's just by way of information. Thanks for that. Um. Listen. This is going to be a talking talking point for the whole day. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, uh, so, so uh, yeah, listen, make your voice heard on it. Use the hashtag JoySMS. Tell us what you're thinking. We'll share a few tweets before the show ends. Uh, but some messages from our partners. More after these. What would you do if you have the choice to do anything in life? Build your dream house. Take very good care of your family and plan for a comfortable retirement. Plan a befitting funeral for your loved ones. When they depart, how would you live? If you knew there was a friend waiting to support you, 